In this Redshift tutorial, we are going to cover volume scattering and fog. To enable volume scattering in your scene, go to your render settings and under output, scroll down to environment, atmosphere. Hit the checkbox and create Redshift volume scattering. In your attribute editor, you'll have your options for your Redshift volume scattering. And so we can tweak our light settings as well as our volume scattering. I'm going to copy the tab and move it across. Let's start the IPR to see our current render. Now that the IPR is running, you can see that we have a light bulb and we have a light source from the light bulb and we have some other hidden lights that are lighting the light bulb. As you can see, even though we enabled volume scattering, we still don't see any scattering in our scene. And that is because we need to enable each light to affect the volume scattering. To enable each light to affect the scattering, go to our light rig and on the ball glow light, select it. And you can see if you scroll down under the volume tab, there's a contribution scale as well as samples. So let's turn this up to one. As you can see, one is a bit too much and it's extremely bright as well. This could be caused by two things, either our contribution scale is too high or our scattering and attenuation is too high. So let's tweak our volume scattering first before we tweak our volume contribution scale. I'm going to reduce the scattering to 0.02. Scattering dictates how bright our fog is. And attenuation, I'll increase it to 0.02 as well. This basically affects how much light gets absorbed as it travels through the fog. Now that I think our settings are okay, let's reduce the contribution to scale to 0.5. And let's do a bucket render to see if we have any noise in our scene. If you open our render settings, I already tweaked all of our other render settings to make sure that we don't have any noise anywhere else in our scene. So I know for certain that all this noise is coming from our volumetrics. To clean up volumetric noise, you can increase the samples in your lights. For example, in this case, I'll increase the samples to 512, save a section and hit render again. The noise improved dramatically and the render time is only a second different. Now let's have a look at enabling another light to affect our volume scattering. Let's start IPR again. Go to my light link and in my top light just turn up the volume contribution scale again. As you can see I have this white volumetric coming down from the top as well. Again I'll turn my samples really low just so we can demonstrate how to clean up noise. I'll pick a section on the side and do a bucket render. Again, it's apparent that we have some noise coming from that top light. So to clean up that noise, again, I'll just increase my samples on that light. That improved dramatically and I've forgotten to save, but it's pretty evident that it's cleaning up the noise. Great. So now we covered how to enable scattering and how to enable individual lights to be affected by the fog. So let's turn off the top light. So we're back to just our light bulb scattering. And now I wanted to talk about phase as well. So what I'm going to do is under a geo section, I have a light blocker geo. I'm going to turn it on and hide our ground, which basically just gives me a sphere around our light bulb and it has tiny holes in the shader. So if you go on the, the overall settings in the opacity tab, we have a noise with lots of holes and that's basically what's giving me this effect. Now to see some of the rays coming through the holes, which is the effect that I'm looking for, I need to increase the intensity of this light. So I just go back to my light bulb and increase this value. I'm starting to see the rays coming through these holes and I'll just do a bucket render over here so we can see a bit more detail. Great. So this is how you can do volume rays or god rays coming through a window and so on. 
please note that the smaller your light is, the more intense this effect is going to be. The next thing we are going to cover is phase. So if I just do a bucket render around this section with phase zero, you'll notice how we see the rays come in towards the camera and some are going away from the camera and so on. Phase allows us to control which the rays coming towards the camera or going away from the camera. For example, if I increase this to, or decrease this, sorry, to minus 0.5, do another render and save, you'll notice that rays that are traveling away from the camera and not towards the camera are more visible. And here is a comparison. Save this one and now increase phase to 0.5 and do another bucket render. And you'll notice now the rays that are coming towards the camera are more visible and rays that are going away are less visible. So again, this is phase minus 0.5, rays are going away. And rays 0.5, the rays are coming. Or phase 0.5, the rays are coming towards the camera and this one was zero. Now that we have phase covered, let's turn this back to zero and I'm just quickly going to cover fog and hide fog. So let's hide our light blocker and bring back our ground and also turn back the intensity of our light to default where it was. Under the fog section, we can enable hide fog. If you go to the emission color, and change that to be green, you'll notice how we have a green fog appearing around five world units in our scene, as hide fog is set to be five units. We can check to make sure that we're at five units, my units, by checking our viewport. I have a measurement tool which shows that from the bottom of the grid to the light bulb, it's around 11 units. So if I open the viewport again, the IPR, and I just change the height to be seven units. You'll see how the fog moves upwards. You can also create a wall of fog, for example, by using the ground normals. If I change the ground normal instead of pointing up in the Y, if I change that to be one in the Z, and I'll just reduce the height to something like one, I'll also increase the attenuation of my fog to something like 0.5, or I can go to 0.1, just so it's easier to see the fog. We can also combine this with an overall color for our fog. For example, if I wanted to have a general red fog, as well as a green wall of fog, it's easily achievable by using the general tint and the fog emission color. You can also control the ray contribution scale. So for example, if I didn't want this pink top fog to affect my refractions, I can just turn it down and you'll notice if I save this one and then turn it back up, there's obviously a big difference the way the ray contribution affects our final render. Let's go back to one-on-one. -on -one. Turn our fog back to white. And this concludes our Redshift volume scattering tutorial for beginners. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.